Hi, my name is Lane McKittrick. I'm the founder of Lane of Inquiry, a nonprofit organization I started so that I could be more intentional about conducting education research specific to families of children who are deafblind. I'm also the mom to four boys, two who are deafblind due to Usher syndrome, and one who has learning disabilities. This past year, I was a research analyst at the Center on Reinventing Public Education at the University of Washington. This research center since last March has been focused primarily on COVID specific research. I was on a team that conducted COVID education research. Today, I'm here to share about a qualitative research study I conducted this past year called The Importance of Family Professional Partnerships in Times of Uncertainty. You can check out the full research brief and synthesis on my website, www.laneofinquiry.org. There's three objectives for today. The first is to gain knowledge about how relationships between families and their schools may have changed as a result of the pandemic. The second is to gain an understanding of the strategies parents found most effective in collaborating with their IEP teams. And thirdly, being able to identify challenges and successes that parents of children with disabilities experienced with working their, with their IEP teams. As a parent myself of three children with disabilities, family professional partnerships is a topic that's very important to me. Parent involvement is mandated as part of IDEA, but what that looks like in practice often looks different. Some parents report negative experiences with IEP meetings, whereas some have developed strategies that have helped them build strong relationships with their child's IEP teams, such as I found in my past research. In March, 2020, Students across the world were forced to be out of the classroom due to the coronavirus. Too many students with disabilities were reportedly not receiving special education services and supports that are part of their IEPs. The field struggled to move quickly on how to provide services and supports virtually. Families of children with disabilities took on roles that they had not in the past, such as monitoring IEP progress, helping to provide accommodations, finding and teaching, engaging in accessible curriculum and activities, and much more. The pandemic simply put a spotlight on existing special education challenges. This is why partnership with families is more important than ever before. Our children who are deafblind often have large IEP teams, making collaboration more challenging at times. Also, the low incidence of deafblindness leads to some unique challenges when working with IEP teams. Early in the pandemic, I conducted some additional research studies related to special education during the pandemic. I was part of a research team that collected and analyzed data on how 126 of the larger districts across the country were responding to COVID. I was always looking for any small mention of special education in these plans. In the spring, there was very little mention and in the fall planning, there wasn't much more. Fall plans for the most part focused on health and safety and scheduling. Special education was often not mentioned, and if it was, it was mostly about prioritizing students with disabilities for in-person instruction when it was safe to do so. As a parent myself, I wanted to understand if more communication was happening with families behind the scenes. I talked with teachers who were also parents about their experiences. I talked with schools and families in these schools about their experiences. Through this other research, we found that the schools that were doing well had all prioritized relationships with families. And better yet, these schools had strong relationships in place before COVID. They had often dropped everything at the beginning of the pandemic and just connected with families. It wasn't at that point about the academics. It was more than that. It was about addressing individual family needs. Over this past year, parents have been taking on new roles. What used to be a teacher-student relationship is now a teacher-student-parent triangle. But what if we don't have strong relationships with families? How can that triangle work? Especially if families are all experiencing the pandemic in different ways. If we don't have strong relationships with these families and ask them, how will we know how to reach these students and their families? 
The emotional strain that educators and families have experienced makes these relationships with families even more important. I was glad to see, however, that the field of deafblindness really found ways to be creative in how to support students in a socially distanced way and virtually. As I was conducting all this other research, I kept wondering to myself, for families that already had strong relationships with their schools, did this relationship become stronger or are families feeling disappointed that the partnership is breaking down? What about families who before the pandemic had strained relationships with their schools? As a parent, I thought about how important these seven principles of a partnership are right now, especially communication, which was a struggle for many IEP teams and schools. What I'm going to share with you is what I, my research around what I found and how there was a connection with some of these seven principles of partnership, communication, professional competence, commitment, advocacy, equality, respect, and most importantly, making sure we have a trusting relationship between IEP members. I conducted a qualitative research study interviewing parents about their experiences. The two research questions in my study were what strategies of parents of children who are deafblind found most effective in collaborating with their child's IEP teams during COVID and what challenges are parents experiencing, parents experiencing when collaborating with IEP teams. I started interviews in the spring and then I did follow-up Google surveys in the fall to see what had changed. There were 30 participants all recruited on Facebook. 17 of these participants have children who are deafblind. This was intentional because I wanted to write up deafblind specific findings. I am a parent of two children who are deafblind and my nonprofit organization focuses on deafblindness. So this was important to me. I transcribed all the transcripts and coded them into DEUCE. After data analysis, I sent them out to participants to see if the findings resonated with them. Given the time constraints, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail and methodology, but feel free to email me if you have questions. What I heard most frequently was about communication. It was a huge source of frustration because of how uneven it was. I found that family school communication made all the difference for families. Parents seemed more tolerant in the spring, but when that communication did not come in the summer to allow parents the ability to plan, it was a challenge. IEP team communication came late as well, often right after school started or just before. This communication was more helpful to families, but often did not have a lot of details, simply because the team didn't know what in-person options would look like. Families with higher levels of personalized communication seemed more satisfied but most families did not hear enough or early enough. About half the families I spoke with are with a receiving and appreciate one-on-one -on -one check-ins, not just because the teacher and student, not with the teacher, not just between the teacher and student, but with the parents as well. These parent-teacher check-ins are even more important for families of younger children or who, the, with those who have more significant support needs. In the spring, communication was mostly about sharing resources. There was less of that in the fall. This fall, there was a lot more problem solving, individualization, that is for some families. I have a few quotes that I added on this slide to give some examples. Midway through the quarantine, I was like, what can we do to get parents to really feel like they have a voice right now? Can we put out a survey? And then I really feel forgotten by my case manager. Communication seemed to be a struggle regardless of the past relationship, simply because of all the uncertainty. Professional commitment was a bright spot during the pandemic. I heard many stories about educators going above and beyond the spring because simply it was the right thing to do because these educators cared. Later in the pandemic, commitment was shown through supporting families in other ways, showing parents how to teach from home, listening to what they needed, remaining flexible and individualizing the approach. This was not easy, especially since fall launched with what felt like for many, a one size fits all start to the year. Parent perceptions of commitment seem stronger if they had past relationships with the team to carry them through, 
to get families the support that they needed. Then there's advocacy. This was also a bright spot. Parents have been able to develop new advocacy strategies now that they have a front seat to their child's education. Lots of parents are finding new ways to look at things, new ways of advocating. Parents have been finding ways with increased confidence to advocate for individual needs. Advocacy was something I heard from families, regardless of whether or not they had prior positive relationships with their teens or not. A couple other quotes here. I wish for, for there to be some sort of level of empathy, but also action because it goes a long way. The IEP team was hesitant to come up with new strategies. They were holding on to hope that everything would be back to normal. The parents I spoke with told me that they felt more engaged and empowered now. That doesn't mean that they spent more time devoted to their child's education because many of these parents worked outside of the home and that wasn't possible or they were taking care of family or something else. There were many stories I heard from spring my child, my school thinks I'm opting out, but that's not it at all. Parents were just focused on non-academic goals for their family, for instance. Everyone was going through the pandemic in different ways, needing to focus on different things. I heard so many parents tell me of aha moments, of understanding better how their child, children learned. Through all of this is the need to respect each other, to be kind, we are all overwhelmed and parents recognize that teachers are overwhelmed as well. There remain challenges, challenges that IEP teams are working to address. Some of these are deafblind specific challenges. For instance, accessibility. Computers and other assistive technology were slow to roll out with a lack of training. Closed captioning was also slow to roll out. There was also a need for IEP teams to problem solve and put new accommodations in place, such as teachers wearing headsets and to provide listening breaks. There were also IEP teams were also addressing social emotional health concerns, parents expressing that making friends was already hard before the pandemic and the pandemic is making this even more challenging, particularly for our students who are deafblind who sometimes social, the social aspects are difficult. Students are struggling with changes to their routine and some students not understanding why they can't be in school or if they are in school, why their teachers have so much personal protective equipment on. Some families and students are still not able to safely return to school and they're not able to receive in-home medical support services. Some services also are still not possible due to social distancing, such as orientation and mobility and like cane training. Another quote here from a family, we're barely making it through the regular education, reg the regular classroom stuff and keeping everyone sane while we're staying at home. There's also some non-deafblind specific challenges, challenges that we don't have control over all the uncertainty that still exists. In the spring, many educators felt like their hands were tied. Parents knew this and tried to be empathetic. But when things hadn't changed in the fall, it was even more challenging to get answers and move plans forward. Regression is something that is unknown, but is something that families worry about. Without being able to work on certain IEP goals, it's really hard to quantify the regression. There are positives though. Parents are feeling more empowered, confident, and more in control, feeling like they have more knowledge than they did previously about their children's needs. Parents also have found that the pandemic is a good time to focus on non-academic goals, self-care goals, and self-advocacy, self-determination, for instance. There's also oftentimes some schools are showing increased communication. Uh, I heard a lot more stories about parents and schools texting each other uh, use of Class Dojo, What's Up app, and things like that. Parents are seeing progress firsthand, so are advocating for teams to create goals that are appropriately challenging. Parents see what progress is possible. Couple quotes, I've actually enjoyed it now because I see what he's capable of and what he's not. 
all these things I've been asking them to put in place at school are working at home. It's really made me a better or more engaged parent in many ways. And I feel like I, a big chunk of my life was just trying to be nice to everyone on my son's team. And now I don't have to worry about that. So what can we learn from this pandemic about collaboration? As a parent, I can say I learned a lot. The parents I spoke with would agree. It comes down to this, relationships matter. Partnership is more important than ever before. We know from past research that fostering collaboration is difficult when there is stress and uncertainty. It takes more dedication. There are things we can do to build these relationships. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Ask families constantly what they need. Situations change frequently. If things didn't go well in the spring, find ways to show your commitment to help build out, build back any trust that may have been lost with families. Work together to individualize solutions. Deaf blindness, because it's low incidence disability, a spotlight has been put on that reality during the pandemic. Teamwork has been vital to the success of children who are deaf blind during the pandemic to address accessibility and other challenges. Parents are a key part of that team with their children at the center. And then lastly, respect each other and be kind. Put yourself in another per the other person's shoes. Parents also shared strategies that worked for them. Prioritizing communication, those one-on-one -on -one check-ins were incredibly important. Pushing for flexibility, problem solving, and individualization. Reprioritizing goals. This is a good time to focus on some non-academic goals, such as the expanded core curriculum. These families have built up their advocacy toolkit this year with new knowledge of how their children learn. And it's really important for us to be flexible. This year is difficult for everyone and understanding that children are also feeling stressed. We really need to work together as a team to be able to make progress for the child. Thank you so much. Please reach out if you have any questions.